Hi everyone, today I'm going to demonstrate to you um, SQL high availability and also disaster recovery fully hosted in Azure. So in this scenario today I have got um, a, a primary site which is hosted in Azure Australia e East Data Center which is the uh, Sydney Data Center and the disaster recovery site hosted in Azure Australia Southeast Data Center which is the Melbourne Data Center. So I have got these two environments um, connected through VPN, site-to-site -site VPN. Um, and I have, in the primary side, I have got a three-node um, SQL um, always on availability group, uh, which has on which has two SQL nodes, and they are synchronously synchronizing the databases. I've also got a witness server for that to support that. Uh, the other uh, on the DR side, I have got a SQL server which is also committing an asynchronous synchronization of the databases from the primary site. Um, and of course they are connected, the communication happens com uh, through the VPN tunnel. Um, so when you look at the components of this, this, this primary um, availability group um, is is deployed in the availability set. So that's 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 important to be um, to be highly available in the Azure East Data Center. It's it's very important to be, uh, important to to those three servers to be in the uh, same availability set. Also, this, this component here, the load balancer, is very important to configure the floating IP of the availability group listener. Uh, that is, that's achieved through the actual Azure load balancer. Um, also, I have got um, I've got the web servers here configured just to show you. Uh, there's no high availability configured for the web server, but it's just an app running running IIS uh, application just to show you the availability of the SQL Server. And I've also got an Active Directory to provide authentication uh, for this, uh, to provide authentication for these environments. So let's go, let's go and have a look at the configuration on the um, Azure side of things. So I have configured this in the resource management portal and I'll show you what are the resource groups that I have created. So I have actually um, divided um, the resource groups based on the application. So um, I have got for each of the locations I have got resource groups configured and also for each application the SQL application, web application and also Active Directory I have got different um, resource groups configured. The core infrastructure includes all the networking components in there. So the gateway, um, the virtual network and also the public IPs and etc. all resourced in there. So the benefit of this is if you go to the uh, SQL resource group you will see um, what are the resources in there and then you can actually at the end of the day you can see um, the monthly cost easily or you can actually calculate the monthly, monthly cost easily for this um, SQL resource group and that will actually give you the uh, the cost for running SQL in uh, in the Sydney data center here. Also same same goes to the web and also same goes to the other data centers as well. I've also got the um, the traffic manager profile configured, uh, which didn't actually show in the diagram there. So the traffic manager actually doing the automatic failover from the disaster recovery site to the um, from the primary site to the disaster recovery site. So that's actually wasn't shown in there, and that's actually configured it that way. At the moment, uh, primary site is up, and the secondary or the disaster recovery site is only standby. Um, so yeah, the VMs. So if you look at uh, the pr dis uh, the secondary or the disaster recovery site, I've got a SQL Server and and the components of it basically. Um, yeah, let's let's remote into one of the VMs and have a look. Um, so let's go into so this is this is actually the um this is actually one of the sql servers um that i actually um logged in so th actually when you this is the dashboard and you can th right click on the availability and go show dashboard and get the dashboard over here so for um sql04 is the primary node at the moment and i and you can see um everything's looking good so i can actually do a failover and look uh 
uh, actually see what's the how the application behavior before that I will I will quickly move into the application my web front end and I'll explain you what I have got here so this is just a basic application here look uh, talking to a database and presenting all the um, pr products that it has so it's the adventure works database that's it's looking at and I have a small shopping cart here so this is this is currently reading from the Sydney data center and um, so if you look at the um, if you look at the the secondary site uh, so this is this is actually this this is actually connected to the Sydney data center which is Australia East and this is actually connected to the disaster recovery site which is currently active and that's why it's giving you an error so this is actually hitting the traffic manager traffic manager URL actually doing the automatic failover it it actually gives you the gives you whatever the one that's available uh, it redirects you to the to the correct data center and then it load balance it uh, or it uh, it fails over it properly so um so let's do a uh, let's do a sql fail uh, failover manually and see what happens there so i'm going to do a right click and do a manual failover here um, so I'm going to be failing over within Sydney from the current primary of um, zero SQL zero four to zero three. Uh, so let's have a let's go and have a look. So currently it showed that SQL over three uh, I can fail over without any issues, and it's a synchronous commit, so it will actually do the failover. While let's wait and see what's the uh, progress looking like. So it's actually completed successfully and what we will do now I need to go to the primary node and that will actually show it's actually um, that will actually come up in a bit um, what we will do is we will go to the uh, application side of things and then we'll do a quick refresh so yeah you can see um, You can see the application is actually um, up and running without any issues. So the da it's connecting to the database and no issues at all. So um, the dashboard is refreshed as well, and I can see now everything synchronized in here. So what we will do now? It's the this is the primary node, and let's let's make a disaster here. So I'm going to log into the SQL three, and I'm going to shut down that server. And then uh, we can see um, um, what we can see a uh, automatic failover between the sites, and then uh, and then let's look at the application behavior. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run. going to shut down this server and then uh, let's have a look at the behavior from there and it disconnected and that should actually um, that should actually f if you look at another node so the because I'm connected to this it's not connect it's not showing anything so if I connect to the other server now it should have the services fail over so if I look at the dashboard uh, from here, I should see that it's failed over to this. Um, yeah, so its crime current primary is zero four, and it's actually uh, this this server here, which is the zero three SQL zero three, have um, have some issues actually, and that's why it's showing it as red. Uh, so if you look at the application again, so this should have failed uh, failed over automatically. So if I do a refresh, yeah, there's nothing, nothing reflected on the application. It's correct, connecting to the database and uh, and actually showing you the information. So also um, on the traffic manager end, there's n no no change for the uh, for the end users. Um, let's let's make a disaster. Let's lay this. Let's declare a disaster on the Sydney side. So I'm going to shut down the second SQL server as well from the Sydney side, which is the last SQL server. I'm going to shut it down. Hmm. 
I'm going to shut it down and then let's have a look um, let's have a look what happens now I need to connect to the um, Melbourne server because all the other servers are down so let's do a refresh on this and see what happens um, show dashboard critical there. Um, it's it's getting critical because you are losing all the services um, and this is not actually doing any automatic failover because this is a secondary asynchronous site asynchronous is a synchro um, synchronizing site so you need to actually do a manual failover to get it up so what I do is I declare a disaster on the primary site so I kick off my disaster recovery plan and then I'm actually kicking off the SQL always on availability group uh, failover manually and I need I'm expect I'm accepting a data loss here because the the latest copy that it has in the disaster recovery will be the the copy that it that will make the primary which means there can be some data loss because it's an asynchronous commit that was happening for to the disaster recovery side so I accept that and I do go next and that should do the manual failover to the disaster recovery site and actually the primary site should have issues now if you do a refresh and it actually it takes time which means it ha it, sh it has errors it should give me an error and on the disaster recovery site it's up and running now on the disaster recovery site and if I do the traffic manager URL that should actually redirect me to the disaster recovery site uh, traffic manager you will see now the traffic manager is actually presenting from the Melbourne server and it's actually up and running from the tra traffic manager side of things as well and you can also go to the dashboard and see it's, it's successfully failed over to the disaster recovery site and it's actually showing some errors there Let's have a look, go and look at the traffic manager profile. So it says that the Melbourne is online and the disaster recovery site is um, is degraded, and the monitoring status is currently degraded. I so this demonstrates the full high availability and the disaster recovery f uh, from SQL always on availability groups hosted in Azure multiple data centers. Thank you everyone for listening.